a sticky focus switch button from the time I spilled beer on it, a stiff manual focus ring, also from the time I spilled beer on it, scratches on the manual focus ring from bumping into stuff, scratches on the top corners of the camera from using two camera strap lugs, like an idiot, a stuck battery door that won't open unless I hit it, and a bunch of other miscellaneous scratches and bumps from years of travel and use. I tried to take care of this camera, I really did. But using this camera, taking it to different places, traveling made wear and tear inevitable. This is four years of abuse with a Fujifilm X100V. My everything camera. When I first bought this camera, I needed something for everything. I wanted a camera to make YouTube videos with and also to explore photography, which meant 4K video, eternal profile, and slow-mo in 1080p to capture fun moments. It also meant something small and minimal enough to bring around everywhere. And I also wanted something that looked pretty good, which was a lot to ask of one camera, but man, I was greedy. But I had already tried things like the X-T30 with the 18-55 and the 35-F2 and they didn't really sit well with me. Both cameras have similar specs but the look and feel of the V made a big difference. So I took a gamble. At the time the Fujifilm X100V had just come out and I didn't have the money to buy it straight up. So I sold the X-T30 and the lenses and bought a near mint version of the V. This was well before the V blew up so prices were somewhat reasonable at the time. And that gamble paid off. Upon first touch and use, the camera felt perfect. I quickly got a screen protector, put a UV filter on, and took it everywhere. And I mean everywhere. From camping trips, to hangouts and parties, to workouts, to even work. Wherever I went, this camera went. And this was what I'd consider my real introduction to photography. You see, although I played with cameras like the X-T30 in the past, I still had no idea what I was doing. And before that, I was using a little Sony RX100 Mark III, which I didn't even know how to use properly at the time. I was very much more video oriented at the time, and this camera was my shoe-in to photography. I still look back at this time somewhat fondly because although I didn't know anything, I was having a lot of fun. Everything was new and exciting. Film simulation recipes were a lot of fun to experiment with. Street photography, I wasn't very good at, but was cool to explore. And it was overall a good time. It's like listening to your favorite album for the first time, or watching your favorite TV show or movie for the first time. There was no judgment or care about good or bad photography, just taking photos. And sometimes, every now and then, I reminisce and try to get back to that state. Because as you guys know, that free state of mind can often be when you create your best work. And I guess technically my photos could have been better back then, but whatever, who cares? Photography was simpler back then because all I had was one camera, one lens, and it also felt like all I needed. I had the perfect camera for what I wanted to do. So this might just be my nostalgia speaking, but that was a pretty cool time. I think many of us can relate to the excitement of getting into a new hobby for the first time, exploring all the different elements and facets of it, and not being constrained by any preconceptions of how things should be. So if you're in that zone right now, cherish it. Don't fuss or worry about getting new gear, stress about making better art, or be concerned with who you are as a photographer. Just enjoy this moment because the novelty doesn't last forever. The Ideal Tagalong As soon as I started adding more gear to my kit, my use of the Fujifilm X100V changed. I needed something to help with all the workload as I progressed with this creative journey and YouTube. You see, I was using the V for everything. Not only street photography, but also long-form YouTube videos, documenting memories, etc. And although the V did a great job, there were some limitations. It's a small camera, so although it has great video, it's not meant to record for a long period of time. So things like one hour podcasts are out of the question even with something like an external recorder. The camera would simply overheat too fast. Plus, for hybrid work, switching between photo and video, although not terrible, still required the drive mode button, which took a few extra steps. So I just needed some help to make this whole process smoother, which meant a video workhorse camera that could allow me to make better content more easily and let the V do more of what it was meant to do, photography. So that's where the Fujifilm X-T4 came in. Maybe three years ago now, I picked up the X-T4 to fill up these gaps in my work. And so far, it's done a pretty good job. It takes care of most of my work-related stuff, which in turn allowed me to use the V primarily for photography. And the V became more of a casual tag-along camera that I just bring everywhere. And giving less attention to video actually made it easier to focus on framing and composition. I could focus more on developing a street, candid, and documentary approach to my photos, and I got better at capturing the little moments and expressions of things in my life. So sometimes this was just simple, nice, everyday moments of life. Other times it was more like capturing the feelings, expressions, and emotions of people. And I really started to understand more about how to connect what I was seeing in the moment to present emotions at this particular time with this particular lighting. And that 
was pretty cool. Size also played a big part in this. Now, the X100V isn't tiny like the Ricoh GR series. It still has a bit of size and weight to it, but it's small enough and portable enough to bring with you everywhere. In 2021, me and a few friends took a whole Europe tour, exploring countries like Spain, France, Italy, and the Czech Republic. And it was very useful to bring along to restaurants, bars, and even concerts as a tag along friend. This is where I feel like the whole X100 line shines. It's really good when you're trying to live life and you just want to bring something along to take pictures. And you don't need to worry about looking suspicious or like a professional because the camera itself just looks like a basic consumer film camera, just a little bit nicer. Which can save you at times if you're traveling to more sketchy places, it's the bigger cameras and lenses that look more stealable. Plus, it'll get you a certain kind of images that these big heavy cameras just can't get. Candid, more natural photos that are reminiscent of older film snapshots, which makes sense because this is a point and shoot camera after all. So anyways, that's the second role the V played and still plays in my life and my photography as the ideal tag along camera. Documentation and keeping things fun. If you've watched me for any amount of time now, you'll know that I use the V and now the 6 for documenting my life. But before I got this camera, I had no initial thoughts of documentation. It never crossed my mind, I didn't care. And at the time we had things like Snapchat memories, iPhone pictures, and social media posts. Those were almost proxies for documentation or keeping a record of our lives. And it felt like there was no incentive to get a separate camera if you could just use your phone. But as I got more and more into photography, I realized that photography with a real camera is just way more fun. Whether you shoot film or digital, having something separate just for photos just makes sense. And I really like this aspect. It incentivized me to take more photos, which led me to capturing more moments and memories in my life I probably wouldn't have taken, which also leads me to want to go out more and do more fun things. And it makes me appreciate this idea of documentation much more. Now, I'm not fixated on capturing every single thing that goes on in my life, but I'm more willing to take an extra photo here or there, or even be in the photo myself. Plus, this side of photography is important to keep because it lowers the stakes. You see, over time, photography has become more of a serious thing for me. It used to be just experimental and fun in all the things I mentioned earlier. But nowadays, I also view it as a craft, a discipline, and an art form. It's something to improve and get better at. And your photos can be used to create bigger projects like books, photo zines, prints, etc. And thinking about photography like that is a different mindset entirely, which is probably why some of my videos are more serious than it needs to be for just casual photography. So it's tricky because personally, I want to get better at photography and build bigger things, but I also want to keep and retain that sense of fun I had when just getting into photography and just taking simple pictures of me and my friends. But learning and understanding and embracing these two sides has helped me get better while also having fun. I've got the art side, which is about expression, getting better, and improvement. But I also have the casual side, which is about documentation, living life, and just having fun. And again, you don't need the V or the 6 to do any of this, it's just my preference. The important part here is to remind oneself of these two sides that they both exist. Yes, get better, but yes, also have fun. So if you find yourself getting too loose with your photos and the pictures you take start sucking, remind yourself to focus more and be more intentional with each shot. And if you find yourself getting too serious about what you're doing and you're not enjoying the moment anymore, remind yourself to loosen up and relax. Balancing both may be challenging at first, but it is possible. Here's another tip for keeping things fun. Ask yourself, what kind of photos did I take when I first started? For me, it was things like hangouts, memories, road trips, etc. Do more of that, because chances are that kind of photography was looser, less strict, and more open for you. And it's coming full circle and returning to that style of photography that will allow you to reset your photography again, which in turn will allow you to not only scratch the itch for your creative desires, but also enjoy photography again, and just not take things too seriously. Make sense? Where I am now. Nowadays, I hardly touch the X100V. Not because I don't want to use it, but because I have the X106 now. And they're basically the same camera, save for a few differences that we'll talk about in a different video. Plus, with all the scars, messed up buttons, and battery doors, it's actually functionally harder to use this V. So this guy is retired as of now. He served me well for many years. Job well done. I do plan on taking him out every now and then just for fun to see if it makes a difference or if it brings any sense of nostalgia back. This one is a different color as well, so it helps to mix things up. So what does four years of abuse with the X100V look like? It looks like lots of scars and bruises from taking this thing everywhere. Scratches and spills and inevitable damage from when you're on the move. And some interesting lessons about photography and oneself as a photographer. Things like learning how your needs change as your photography changes. And learning how to balance all this seriousness and fun. All of which I think 
makes me better and more excited to do more. So anyways, I hope you found this interesting. If you've had similar thoughts about certain cameras and how you've used them in your photography journey, please do share them in the comments down below. Also, if you like photo books, you can check out my latest photography zine, The Sinking Sun. And while you're at it, grab a free 4x6 print. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a good day. I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.